I grew up in Ukraine. At the age of 13, my family immigrated to the United States as refugees. My family on both sides, mom and dad, and their parents grew up under the former Soviet Union regime. They were prosecuted, they were persecuted, they were harassed, some of their relatives sat in jail, and some were murdered because they were Christians. They experienced harsh poverty. The promises that communism made to Ukraine when they conquered Ukraine, those promises were never fulfilled. And establishing my life here in the United States, after a while I met my wife who is actually from Moscow, Russia. And now we've been married for 12 years. I also am a pastor at the local church here in Tri-Cities, Washington. I have since visited Ukraine numerous of times. Last year I had the opportunity to minister at a church in Kiev as well as later on minister in Odessa. I have friends that are in Ukraine and I also have cousins that are still living there. Some who did not want to leave their home, what they've had there and life that they have there and move to United States when they had the opportunity to do so. Reports that have been happening, that have been coming right now are just heartbreaking. And you've been seeing things online now. We understand not everything online is true. But what is happening in Ukraine, what you see online does not even scratch the surface. There is really a devastating, heartbreaking things that are taking place. I got a report this morning from a, a person whose family lived in the apartments with a photo of that apartment that got hit, the third floor got hit with the rocket and everything got destroyed. The family escaped. They're hiding in some kind of a church right now and the military, Russian military blew up the bridges so they can't even go from one place to another. A lot of people are trying to escape. A lot of people are trying to run and Ukrainian people right now are under huge attack. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of the historical context. There are so many videos. I'm more of a, a pastor and a friend and a former Ukrainian who lived there and who still is Ukrainian by nationality. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we need to do spiritually. But somebody sent me this short explanation and though it simplifies things, it's a lot more complex than that about what is happening between Russia and Ukraine. And I'm going to just read it to you. Ukraine used to be in an abusive relationship with Russia. So it uses an example of relationships. Ukraine used to be in an abusive relationship with Russia until she built up the confidence and called it a quits back in 1991. Ukraine has been enjoying being single for the past 30 years, looking forward to continuing growing and building other relationships. Russia being the toxic ex that is, that he is, wants her back and does not want her to meet new people and create new relationships. A couple of weeks ago, Russia started sitting in the front of Ukraine's house. And when her friends asked him what he was doing there, he said, oh nothing, I'm just getting a little bit of exercise. That's it. After her friends told her that Russia was potentially getting ready to do something bad to her, he said, they're lying, they just want you to be scared of me and that's not what I'm trying to do. Yesterday, Russia broke into the Ukraine's house, beat her up, took the advantage of her while live streaming and double dag dared any of her friends to do anything about it. In the simple form, it's really what's been taking place in the Ukrainian crisis. Uh, Russian president, along with his oligarchs and other people wanting to bring Ukraine back. We know that in last year they pretty much brought 100 over 100,000 troops to the border of Ukraine and last month USA, UK called all of its citizens to come back home. And we know that just a few days ago from the recording of this video, Russian president declared Donetsk Republic as independent nation and he of course ordered Russian military to deploy troops in there. They start firing rockets at civilians, also at the military bases in Ukraine and over 137 people were dead in just that first day and 316 people were wounded. 
Russian Defense Ministry also reported that Russian military destroyed 74 Ukrainian facilities, including 11 air bases. And Putin threatened that if anybody tried to help Ukraine, it will lead to consequences that you have never seen in history. Ukraine is the second largest country in Europe of population of more than 40 million people. As well as Ukraine is, I believe, the most spiritually vibrant, alive, spiritually country in the European uh, peninsula or in the European area. Having been there, seeing the revival that is happening there, there's a crash, a clash of mindsets. The Russian uh, mindset that is very close to the freedom and then there's the Ukrainian mindset that 70% of Ukrainians want to be part of the European Union and want to have cooperation with the West and at the root of it in Ukraine there is freedom of religion a lot of people who occupy government positions are believers actually spirit-filled believers and it's completely opposite in Russia Russian people don't want this war any more than Ukrainian so I don't want us to use this time to create um, these phrases that it's, it's, it's Russian people because most of them are taking protests, they're being arrested now and they're being bullied into silence. As well as Russian media does not want to show what really Russian people want to do with that. Now for us as Christians, enough about the political component, we understand that all of this Putin um, and all of these religious leaders, a lot of them are, and I'm going to say it the way it is, they're puppets. They're the, the somebody who's pulling the strings is the spiritual realm. The scripture tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 through 13. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. This war, first of all, is spiritual. There is a clash that is taking place between the spirits, the principalities and the purposes of God for this earth. As Christians, we live in the enemy-occupied territory. Even in America that we experience freedom, it's still enemy-occupied territory. The devil is the ruler of this age. And we know that the world lies under the sway, under the control of the wicked one. The devil uses people in authority. He stirs them up toward bloodshed. Because war doesn't just kill people. War creates mental illnesses for people who are involved in it. War drives dries out the economy and brings depression war shatters and destroys war doesn't benefit anybody and the devil knows that and so what he wants to do is because of this he wants to drive this create create division create death and create just a really huge defeat and destroy people's lives he's the author of killing stealing and destruction and what he's using is over russia over ukraine even over different regions he assigns his ruling demons, ruling spirits that want to conjure up all of this. And so our main problem is not as much as Putin as, as well as the spiritual components behind it. Now should we as Christians just simply roll up our sleeves and just pray? No, we have to speak. We have to let our voices be heard. We have to vote. Sometimes we even have to go on the streets. Why? Because we have responsibility. We are also citizens. A lot of Christians just, you know, fall into this pass uh, passive mode and saying, no, it's God's will. You know, all of this stuff is just, you know, the end of the days. And some of you are saying that, oh, this is just a sign of the last days. Jesus says you will hear rumors. And as Christians, we should just kind of get in our basements and hide. And hopefully all of this will pass away. I'm pretty sure you won't do that. If somebody comes in, and starts attacking your household, beating your children, raping your daughters, you're not just gonna disappear. You're gonna fight back. I don't care how peaceful you think you are, you're gonna fight back. And we wanna pray for people that are letting their voices be heard that are in Russia. We wanna pray for people that are honestly picking up arms to defend their country. And for those of you who maybe find that as anti Jesus or anti-scriptural to defend your own country. We must understand there's a difference between murder and killing. You know, killing, God expects justice 
military, all of this stuff to do things to propagate His kingdom on this earth and justice. In the Old Testament, we see that God actually condemned Israel for not exercising justice and for allowing innocent blood to be spilled. And that's exactly what is taking place right now in Ukraine is innocent blood is being spilled. And people are taking up arms and people are not fighting Russian forces. They're defending their territory. Otherwise, the power and the kingdom of darkness will prevail. But we understand that it's not by might, it's not by power. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. And we should do both. We should be armed spiritually and people that are on the ground who are doing the both, the, the physical. We need to pray that God will give them the strength and God will give them protection. Not only we are fighting spiritual battle, the scripture tells us we should also pray for peace. First Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 through 4, it says, Therefore I exhort you first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all who are in authority, that you, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life, in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. God wants us to pray for peace. So not only we're going to be fighting against the, the, the spiritual war, we're going to be taking a stand, put on the armor of God, but we're also going to be praying. We're going to be interceding for peace and quiet to come to the territory of Ukraine and also to the territory of Russia. We're going to pray for wisdom for our leaders the leaders in the United States and leaders in Europe to be able to help to de-escalate, de-escalate this conflict. We're going to pray for the churches that they are not going to only host the hurting people, which is what they're doing right now in Ukraine, but that they will use this opportunity to preach the gospel. The pastors I talked to today in Ukraine, they are strong. Though they're crying and weeping on the phone, but they're full of courage and they're saying, we're not in the panic. One pastor I was talking to, he was eating dinner and he said, Vlad, I'm hearing rockets flying. I'm hearing shootings right now in Kiev. He said, it's, it's a full on war that is taking place and I'm hearing this in my own house. But he said, I'm not scared. He says, because in the midst of this, he says, our spirit is strong. We're going to witness. Yes, we're going to do whatever we need to do physically necessary, but we're going to pray for people. We're going to become a safe haven and safe refuge. And he said, and if we're going to lose our life, so be it. But we're going to die serving and preaching the good news. And that is the spirit of a Christian. Sometimes wars get supernaturally stopped and sometimes we lose our life in the process of it. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 24 verse 6, But if you will hear wars and rumors of war, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come, but the end is not yet. And then about a few verses later, he says, but this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the world as the witness to all nations. And then the end shall come. I want to tell you something that Ukrainian churches and Ukrainian people, they're not just hoping for the West to step in. They're not just hoping for the NATO to step in and stop that. A lot of them are already evangelizing, serving because for us as Christians, the most important thing is not only to defend our physical territory, but it's to defend the kingdom of God because one day Jesus, the Prince of Peace is coming. He will right all the wrongs right and He will bring ultimate justice on this earth. He will hold the kings, He will hold the, the, the presidents, He will hold the, the generals accountable and He will establish His kingdom and to His kingdom there shall be no end. So what I'm praying for Ukraine is not only for this peace to come, but I'm praying for the power of God to accompany believers that are scared, to begin to touch the atheists, to begin to touch the young people who are right now have nowhere to turn but to God. And that for the church to be present, to be able to bring that hope and to bring that life. Lastly, what we can do is we can also partner with the churches there in praying for them. Most of us cannot go to Ukraine right now because as of right now as I'm speaking, you can't actually fly in. You can only drive through from another country. And for some of you, that's not going to be possible. But I'm partnering, we are partnering here at this ministry with local churches there, with some people that are actually driving right now from another country to Ukraine and bring some humanitarian aid and also preach the gospel because I'm not just interested just in humanitarian aid. We want to bring spiritual message because people are broken and this is the best time to begin to bring the good news of Jesus Christ for people's attention to turn toward God. 
for people to not panic but to look to God as their Savior. Not Biden, not, not European Union but Christ the victor to begin to bring supernatural help. And you may say, oh that's not enough. You know, you must understand that men's help is not enough. We need men's help. And I reached out to our local congressmen who can, you know, start vouching in front of the Congress for America to send some support and etc. So we're doing our part. And we're going to send some finances as well. And if you want to participate in that, do that. There's a link below where you can take part and all of those finances will go to help in those parts of Ukraine. But most importantly, I want you to take your spiritual weapons. I want you to take your spiritual armor and I want you to engage in war for your brothers and your sisters. Some of them you don't know. Some of you who are blessed by my ministry and I come from that place and that place shaped and formed me. My ancestors grew up there and that persecution and that devotion to God and that loyalty, commitment to God, I carry that in my blood because of them. I'm not a self-made man. The culture that I grew up in, the Pentecostal culture I grew up in, my family affected who I am today and I'm indebted to them. And I want to pray for Ukraine. I want to pray for its leaders. I want to pray for Russian people, my wife being one of them and my in-laws. And I, I want to pray for the churches to begin to move with power right now. Move with the glory of God. Not only help the hurting, but to preach the gospel right in the midst of it. So let's just pray right now. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to come. Let's agree. If you're watching this video, I want you to just, just drop that prayer right now in the comments below. Lord God, we thank You that You are the Lord over the heaven and the earth. We thank You that all the authority is given to You, Lord. And I agree right now with millions of believers around the world who are not just posting on Instagram and Facebook, but who are actually getting on their knees and praying. You said, if my people call by my name, they will pray and they will seek my face. You will hear from heaven. You will heal their land. Lord, I pray for the healing of Ukraine. Lord, I pray right now for the protection for Ukraine. Lord, I pray for the leaders to begin to have wisdom. I pray, Lord God, for the world leaders to begin to have wisdom and discernment of how to help de-escalate this situation. Lord, I pray for Mr. Putin, God, that you will begin to turn his heart that you begin to speak to him supernaturally as you were able to speak to the pharaohs of old, as you were able to speak to the Nebuchadnezzar God, heathen, godless, bloodthirsty kings, but you were able to penetrate that cold, that cold and that callous heart and I pray that you will do exactly the same. Let the scales fall from his eyes, let lies fall God. I pray Lord God that, that the spreading of the misinformation, the propaganda, that is being used on the Russian television right now, God. That so many people are falling prey to it. Even online, God, I pray that that stuff will stop, Lord. That the truth will prevail. Not lies, not fabrications, God, but truth will prevail in Jesus' name. Lord, we take our position as your army in the spiritual realm. Lord, we ask you that your kingdom will come and that your will be done. We ask you, God, that the kingdom of darkness will be pushed back that the principalities and the wicked hosts, God, and the powers of this world, Lord God, will fall and crumble. We know that the enemy is undefensive because you said that, th that the gates of hell will not withstand against the church, God. And we're marching forward, not with physical weapons, but with your name and with the blood of Jesus. We agree right now for the peace in Ukraine. We agree right now for the crippling of the principalities and powers, God for the weakening of principalities and powers over Ukraine and Russia, Lord God. Because of the prayers of your people, because of the cry of your people. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray for the local churches. I pray for the local pastors. I pray for missionaries, bishops, prophets, evangelists, God, teachers. I pray, Lord God, right now for deacons. I pray for men and women of God that they will rise up that the light of God will shine through them, Lord. I am in agreement, Lord God, with every pastor, Lord God, that their church will become a safe haven for the safe haven for their city. I pray, Lord God, that people will find a hiding place under the wings of Almighty God. I pray that healings, deliverance and salvation will begin to break out. I pray that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached even at this such a horrible time. It's such an uncertain time, Lord God, that the eyes of people will be turned to you, Lord. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we pray for the support to come from the United States. We pray for the support to come from the NATO, Lord God. Not only verbal support, not only got sanctions that don't seem to work, Lord God, but, but support that will make a difference in stopping the shedding of the innocent blood in Ukraine. I pray for Ukrainian military. I pray for the citizens of Ukraine that are taking up arms to defend their livelihood, their territory, God, that you will give them wisdom, that you will begin to give them strength, that you will begin to protect them, God. Lord, we pray that on this evil earth, occupied by the rebel of yours, Satan, devil, Lucifer, that your light will shine, that your kingdom will advance, and that your plans will prevail. We trust in you. We are waiting for your second coming. We are waiting, Jesus, for you to ride on the white horse and establish your kingdom. Our soul longs for your kingdom, Jesus, to be established on this earth as it's established in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the ministries that we will be financially supporting, that you begin to give them wisdom to distribute resources in the way that will help the people who need it the most. In Jesus' name, amen. Just want to say thank you for watching this video. As well, please share this video with other people. I'm not going necessarily into a lot of like political nuances that are happening in there, but more of a spiritual component. As well as if the Lord moves upon your heart to help, links are below. Thank you so much. God bless you. Until next time.